All right, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy, Three Stickity Stacks in this thing, baby, representing TKOG, Team Kings of Games. And uh, today, I'm actually going to be showcasing my take on Virtual Worlds. Uh, so this deck is actually very appealing to me because it has all the attract all the things that like attract me to a deck. It's a control deck. It's mid range. It doesn't have to combo off to get the job done. It can accelerate tempo or play at a slow rate. Um, it, the way that it can progress is actually really really cool um, because of how there's it's like a sort of summoning mechanic how these cards work the way they act like true kings and resolve in hand so they dodge cards like valor imperm and droplet like all like the main deck ones uh, i just love how this deck has like sort of this very very good it's not like a necessarily snowball effect but it's like this good circle where you maintain stability every turn you set yourself up for next turn you're constantly putting pressure on your opponent and this deck just has really strong matchups. It's very fun. It's very enjoyable. It reminds me of like when I'm playing Shit Alls or when I'm playing Dragon Maids or Alter Geist or Plunder Patrol. Very similar. Just mid-range, but it can almost combo the same as combo. It's just with decks like this, you don't even have to combo off to get the job done. But with like Dragon Link or, you know, Infernoble, like they're like all in. You know, Dragon Link's like committing 12, 13 cards out of their extra deck. So I really think this deck's really strong. Before I get into the deck profile, a little... Some of your rough draft about what this deck is able to do right now. Um, so there's an LCS that's going on, and um, I saw a pie chart somewhere online that there's 23 spots with this deck. So depending on the conversion rate, this deck might become more popular if we see it like anywhere in the top cuts. It might become more popular. But right now, this deck is really strong in the format. It's good against combo. It's good against control. Um, it actually has main deck outs to. Let me just list the cards. Like this is what makes it so insane about this deck because. There's a lot of cards I don't have to side deck just because my main deck already has the outs, so I don't have to side. So I don't need a side deck outs to Mystic Mine. Um, I don't need a side deck outs to Winda. Um, I don't need a side deck outs to Mega Clops. Mega Clops can be a problem too for other decks, but not this deck. I don't need a side deck outs for um, the Buster Lock. I don't need a side deck outs for the Dragon, uh, the, the Buster Blader um, Buster Lock. I really don't have to worry about any Floodgates. Whether it's like Summon Limit, There Can Be Only One, Skill Drain, um, Rivalry, Goes In, you name it. Uh, I know I mentioned Mystic Mind, but that's insane. Uh, this deck has a really strong Zodiac matchup, Prank Kids matchup, Sky Striker matchup, Salaman Great, El Lich, PK Fire, Burning Abyss. I mean, I could just name how many good matchups this deck has just because of this card right here. And the Trap, it's just it's, it's so insane. This is such a strong control deck, but it can play like a combo deck. That's the... Like, that's the embodiment of mid-range. It's, like, the best of both worlds. So, yeah, I'm going to get into the profile. Just wanted to share a little bit about that. I guess one final thing is, like, in simplified game states, when you have the trap up, when you're playing against combo, because I've been testing this deck a lot, um, when you have the trap up and you have a hand trap like Nib, anything impactful, even if your opponent summons Herod of the Arclight, it doesn't matter because the trap is already activated. So Herod of the Arclight cannot interact with this card. So you can basically just, whenever you want to, pop Herald with this and then just Nibiru them. Um, and you don't have to worry about how big the token is because you can pop it again with the trap on your turn. Uh, so this card, it just wins games by itself. It's so strong, just keeping pressure on a lot of these decks. And it's also really important in the mirror match. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the mirror match. If you guys like in-depth deck profiles, uh, definitely this is for you. But if you're just going to like net deck and skim for the list, just, I guess, fast forward and just find the cards and just go pick them up online or something. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to start with the monsters. This deck is really, really strong. Uh, so we're starting off with three Nyan Nyans. Um, I'm proxying a third because um, I just couldn't get a third. I'm going to pick one up though. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the monsters as I lay them out. Uh, this video is not, I'm not trying to make it too long because, you know, people be crying about that and I'm not trying to hear that. So we have three copies of Lulu, uh, three copies of Nyan Nyan. We also have three copies of Lili, three copies of Lao Lao, and three copies of Gigi. Um, so... First, I'll talk about Nyan Nyan. Nyan Nyan is the only virtual world monster that does not have the True King-esque effect. I like to think of True King because that's how it was when I played True Kings. When I revealed them, people would be like, oh, I saw him strike, you know, on summon. I'd be like, it's effect to special summon happens in hand. You can't let the True King hit the field and then be like, I strike it. It's the same thing with these. You can't just be like, oh, it's summon, I strike it. Like, this effect, when you reveal it in hand, actually is the effect that special summons it. It's like trying to activate Solemn Strike in response to a super polymerization or a fusion spell or a ritual spell after the monster gets summoned, you try to strike it. 
Um, if these work in tandem with like cards like that where you're trying to negate the summon, or if you're interacting with them with cards like Knighted in the Dogmatica matchup, um, Imperm, Veiler, or Droplets, any cards like that, um, you cannot use those on these to stop their effects because their effects activate and resolve in hand uh, to summon them and do it. It's all simultaneous. That also does come up because you can't actually use, like for example, Target Trap, Dump Nyan Nyan to Special GG, and then Trigger Nyan Nyan. Because it is simultaneous, so you can't just special a Nyan Nyan just by dumping it off GG because it all happens at the same time. So that means Nyan Nyan was not in the graveyard in the first place. So that's a perfect example to explain how these are simultaneous. For anybody that doesn't understand this deck too much, because it is fairly new and uh, it's not that popular. But, I mean, with having 23 spots in the LCS, it might become more popular. Who knows? You know, if Infernobles take it, then it's just going to be Link Cross Hawk format. You know how it is. But I do like this deck for the simple fact that it does not combo the way every other combo deck is like comboing off right now. Um, another thing about Nian Yan, besides her not having their inherent summons, is that she is not only an extender, but she allows you to target any of your banishes. So I'm going to explain this to you. So when it does not say face up, but when it in fact just literally says target one of your other banished cards shuffle into the deck, this card makes playing Desires very safe in this deck because if you banish too many copies of a certain card, you could trigger Nian Yan on your turn, use her effect, like let's say you banish two of the trap and you need one on field and one to dump a grave. You'll use her, target, because you could target it since it, even though it's banished face down, because she specifies one banished card, just like Omega, you can target your banished trap, shuffle it back into the deck, and then Foolish Burial it and use its effect. So she actually helps to recycle your Desires cards and also, if you, like, want a Gamma again for whatever situation, like, she just recycles Banish. So that will come up. Just pay attention to that effect because you don't want to ever miss out on that, especially if Desires did Banish too many cards. Nyan Yan can recycle them, just in case anybody didn't know that. And then all of these have the same effect. They just do different, uh, the same claws, but they do different things. So basically how they work is you reveal them, target a Virtual World card on the field, and send one from your deck to your grave with a different type, being Monster Spell or Trap. And then they do A, B, or C. Lulu is the, is probably the most powerful one, um, but the way she works, and people, be careful with this deck, because also, like, I know people are going to complain saying, why don't you just get to the spells, but, like, you have to understand, if you're here to net deck, you're not even going to know how to play the deck. You're just going to pick up a list play and then just get whacked at locals, because you didn't even sit, like, take the time to learn in the profile. Um, so, with these cards, this deck is very difficult, it's not easy to play, it's very punishing to misplace, and the way Lulu works is basically... She cannot search whatever you targeted or sent. So if you want to search a monster, you have to target a trap and dump a spell. If you want to search a spell, you have to target a trap and dump a monster. If you want to search a trap, you have to target a spell and dump a monster. Whatever you target and dump cannot be the same as what you search. Be careful with that because people will misplay with this card and get away with it because this is a new deck. But all I would say is not only read your cards but practice a deck. So she is a very powerful card and she there's just like so many two-card combos in this deck. Um, if you guys are interested, separate video, I'll do like pretty much all the two-card combos that I came up with, and then I'll show you guys the ones that are already on YouTube. But I want to show you guys my homemade combos that I came up with. Then Triple Lili. This is just a double foolish. This is second best compared to Lulu when you're starting your turn off. Lao Lao and GG are just recovery cards. This is an extender and a recovery card in one. Some of these are follow-ups, starters, and recovery cards all in one. So they're very flexible. I like it a lot. Um, this special from Grave and this adds from Graveyard to hand during in phase. So you do this rotating clock where you banish a Quinlong, dump another copy of Quinlong. Uh, you draw a couple cards, so you're going to like draw two in some of your combos. Then in phase, add Lulu back from Grave to hand, and you'll dump a Nyan Yan. So if you play it correctly, you can dump Quinlong, Nyan Yan, in Grave for follow-ups, and search a Lulu on in phase. So you already have your Graveyard set up, and you have a Lulu to start your next turn up. So every time you play this deck, if you're doing it correctly, you're setting yourself up for the next turn. And so that's it for all of these. Nyan Yan's probably the coolest one for interactions where you just like really... um need certain cards that you just don't have like really it's the main thing is for desires uh, she's very important uh, so let me check time okay now I'm gonna move up to the spells and this deck is super duper strong going first or second it's just incredibly strong you guys it's it's like so good like so I'm gonna talk about that so we have three full sparrow goods we have three copies of pot of desires and this card is the nuts 
this is an out to so many problem cards because it can directly activate Quinlong with already a name engraved to banish for Quinlong. So this card outs Winda, it outs Makaba, it outs Doka or Conductor if they don't have uh, like Lost World Token or Mist, but it can out Doka. Um, this card deals with the Buster Blader matchup. Um, this card forces negates out if you're playing against Combo, like Dragon Link. This plus Gamma is already forcing out two negates. If you have a normal summon to bait the seal, You'll attack, tag, seal out, activate this, use Quinlong and Gamma, force the other two negates out. And at that point, like, if you already drew this, it's better because you could basically activate this, play the trap, and then activate this, and you could banish a name to negate. And now you've forced out the two negates, bounce the seal, and the trap is up. So you just need to dump another name, and you can pop the card that's equipped with the Buster Lock. You can out the whole Buster Lock with your main deck virtual world cards. You don't need anything really specific. It's crazy. So these are all nuts. Like, all these cards are gas. And I play one E-Tilling, one call by. So for Fool's Barrel Goods and Desires, the reason why I love playing three of these each in this deck is because obviously I already explained that you won't really be punished that much off Desires unless you literally banish all your Nyan Nyans. That's like the only time you'll be punished. But as long as you have a Nyan Nyan, it doesn't matter what Desires banishes because you can recycle them consistently. And for Fool's Barrel Goods, anybody that would comment saying, oh, I don't want to play three because if I draw two, it's a brick. No, it's not because you just dump Quinlong and then discard the second copy off Quinlong's effect. So this card is literally three extra of any virtual world card when you really think about it because it can search Lulu, which is nuts. So this card is an extremely strong starter and it helps just for your like weaker hands when you don't have enough uh, virtual world cards. This card is just insane. If you open this, plus any of the inherent summons, you can combo like efficiently. Uh, and also, it's really important to know how to combo based on what type you have. So I practiced this deck by normaling any uh, virtual world normal summon monster. Like I did a combo with Nyan Nyan plus Lao Lao, Nyan Nyan plus GG, Nyan Nyan plus Lili, Nyan Nyan plus Lulu. Then I normal summon Lulu and did uh, basically the same thing. Lulu plus uh, Lulu, Lulu plus Lao Lao, Lulu plus GG. And Lulu plus Lili. And I kept doing that for all three normal summons and traded out all of the, the four different names to see what combo you could do. Then I did it with Quinlong. The only way you could combo with Quinlong is if you have Lulu. There's no other two card combination with Quinlong plus a um, virtual world monster. And then this plus any virtual world monster that's not Nyan Nyan is like a, the best combo. Um, from what I did when I was practicing. If there's something that I don't know, and hey, if you know something I don't know, that's fine, but I created my own combos, so that's just what I came off with testing. But yeah, these cards are really strong, and just having all those outs is just really, really, really good. Um, keep in mind that in the mirror match, this can come up in tandem with Gamma, because if they are, their VFD in the mirror match, if they're playing around Gamma, um, when you activate this to put this on field, it'll force the trap out, because if you, they don't have the trap, you can just use this to target VFD, force them to use this effect, and then you can Gamma them. Because, like, they'll wait for you to summon a monster to play around Gamma. They already can play around Droplets or um, Imperm with the trap, but they can't play around Gamma till you commit to a monster. So this forces them to either use the trap or use VFD if they don't have the trap, and you can Gamma them. So this plus Gamma, yeah, I'm just saying, it's probably one of the strongest two-card combinations going second with this deck. It's just so OP. Uh, and then for the hand traps, I'm playing three copies of Nibiru, and probably the best hand trap in the mirror match is Gamma. It's just so strong. It's also really, really strong in this deck because some people just ash the effects and pray that you don't have another one, which is kind of good, but kind of bad at the same time because you got to think of it. You're, you have a virtual world spell or trap up and you're revealing to target. When they ask you, you could just gamma them and you're just going to play through the ash, rip another card with Omega if you play it and you just resolve full combo them and you're basically hand looping. You can even go Trish and Erblathenir if you really just want to be greedy like that or bottoms in. Uh, but gamma is insane. Also, just the fact that playing gamma helps in the mirror match because they will play around it, they'll wait for you to summon a monster to use the VFD. And that's why uh, Pulse Siding games 2 and 3, Kaijus will just get them because they won't commit till main phase. And then we have 3 Ash. There's 3 other hand traps, but it's going to be in the trap lineup. Uh, Ash is just generically good. It's good in the mirror match if their hand's weaker. Like, you can Ash um, on like the first reveal if it's Lulu, and that might be like just all they have. But if they have 2 names, they normally can play through it. And then finally, for the traps, uh, this card is insane. I'm proxying a third, but this card is really, really strong. Keeping pressure in your opponent, it, this card is so good against dinos, it's good against combo, it's good against all these different control decks. Stun, floodgates just don't matter. You don't need to side deck any outs to Mystic Mind because you have this card. You, you like literally have so much access to it. It's so powerful. Uh, like In fact, I think nobody would keep Mystic Mind in against this deck knowing that you have this card. They just wouldn't even like play it. They'd side out the Mystic Mind. Floodgates don't work. 
Um, in the mirror match, this is important because if they reveal a virtual world and target a card, you can chain this to pop that card and their effect will fizzle because it can't recognize what it's attempting to target. Like basically, it has to acknowledge it. Game State has to be able to recognize what the card is, but since it's popped, we can no longer acknowledge that. So this is actually one of the better cards in the mirror match. Um, it's really, really strong. Even if you can't VFD them, just setting this up consistently is just really, really good. It's a well-rounded card. It's so powerful. Uh, it gets Zodiacs, Normal Summon Zoo, Pop It. Uh, you know, I mean, if you want to play Ron Ram Ram, that's a different story. Against Prank Kids, Normal Summon, Prank Kid, One Card Combo, Pop It. And also keep in mind that you have the QB, which is insane. So it's just so good. This card's nuts. And then uh, three more hand traps, three imperms. This is getting the mirror too. Unless they already have the trap activated, you could just imperm Cloud Castle and they'll just pass on Cloud Castle. Um, but if they have the trap up, then, you know, obviously, yeah, it's a hit or miss. But you still want to imperm the Cloud Castle so they can't make VFD. They just end on the QB plus the trap. So this is really good in the mirror match no matter what, pretty much. You just don't, obviously, imperm the actual Virtual Hood monsters. That's so bad because it doesn't do anything. They resolve in hand. Uh, so now, check the timer here. Okay, we're, we're good on time. Uh, for the side deck, I'm side three evenly. This card is nuts, this format. It's so good. Uh, it's even good in the mirror, but this card is just way too... I mean, I don't understand why people don't side it. Like, people say, oh, it'll get negated. Would you rather this be negated or, like, your engine cards? Think about it. So even if it would be negated, it's a bait, right? Uh, so it's just amazing. Like, this card is so well-rounded. It's a blowout card. It's really good against a lot of decks right now. Three Lancia. This is another blowout. I don't have Zoo King Alpha, but I kind of like Kaiju's better right now against just the mirror specifically because the Gamma mind games are real. They don't want to play into Gamma unless they have, like, Ash. That's the only time they don't care because the trap doesn't save VFD from Gamma. So they do want you to commit to a monster. So they're playing into Triple Tactics Talent and Kaiju's by playing around Gamma. So the moral of the story is you can't play around everything. You just do the best you can to play around what is up. There's a higher probability of your opponent having and Kaiju's is pretty low because not everybody sides them. So they will more than likely play around Gamma before they play around a Kaiju. That's why these can win in the mirror match. Because once you Kaiju them, all you have to worry about is the trap. And uh, that's why also outside of Pinker Tops, Twin Twisters is really, really strong. It's extremely strong. Uh, not just in the mirror, but just this format in general. I love hitting two instead of one. With QB up, it's a double cyclone. You can hit Shizum Punishment. Um, it, this card didn't just, it's really insane. In against Prank Kids, their standard combo, if they're going first, you know, they set the plan and the pandemonium. You activate this in draw phase, and they can't chain anything because they're both can only be used in main phase. So this could just punish them, and they won't be able to play it. It's better than Cyclone because if you snipe the wrong card, they'll still have Pandemonium and they'll summon Butler. And Double Raigeki is just too good against this deck, I'm not going to lie. And then we have my proxy for Feather Duster in the one red reboot. Uh, these cards are really, really good in a deck like this when you can put so much pressure on the board. Um, just If you want to play this deck, I really will have, I can't stress it enough because I had such a hard time learning this deck. And I mean, it was very, very challenging. You need to test a lot with this deck. Like, Prank Kids and Zodiacs, not so much. Um, Infernoble and, Di and Dinos and Dragon Links, not even that much anymore because those decks are already known. But this deck, not only because it's new, but because the way it works is like almost like its own mechanic. It is so difficult because I used to use Lulu to literally target a trap, send a spell, and search a monster. Until, like, uh, I mean, not send a spell, search a monster, but I would target a monster, my bad, send a spell and search a monster. And then I had to pay attention that... You have to add one with the third different type. So literally, like I was misplaying with this deck without knowing. So I was creating combos that were not legal combos because I didn't like it was the wording. It was like that one word that I missed when I read the card that had me messing up. So this deck is just not easy. It's like when you're trying to play like Zephyrus. Like it's not the easiest deck. In fact, it's probably out of all the decks that are popular right now, this is probably the most difficult to pilot. But it's very rewarding if you are a skilled player because this is not for like a Mystic Mind or a Numeron Network player, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to insult anybody, but it's just not for the simple-minded. Uh, so, for the extra deck, we have one copy of QB. This card, like, I can make a list of how many decks this beats. It's just way too strong. Way, way too strong right now. It's like the Colossus of the format. I do play Trish because I just love this card. You could play Gotham's and do, like, you know, the Handloop variant. I don't want to play those bricks. I just like my main deck as is. I really like it a lot. It's really strong, in including in the mirror. Um, Trish is just insane. Not only does it out cards like Dragoon and Avermax and stuff like that, um, but it is basically just a hand looping card. When you could play through hand traps and Trish your opponent, whether you're going first or second, this card's always going to be good. Especially if you're um, in the mirror match because you can hit their Quinlong and uh, basically the trap once you play through it, and you can still snipe another. So you're putting them like on a reset. Like basically, 
they have to work with what they already have in hand. So this can also be really dominating in the mirror match, just hitting their follow-ups and taking the trap out of rotation. Uh, obviously, they can recycle it, but just so that you don't have to play into it on their turn. And then Ravenous. This card is not only a draw, but it can just be a spot removal. This deck is really strong going second because it has so many synchros and XYZs that can just spot removal. So many cards, non-targeting, non-destruction removal. Uh, and then we have Vermilion Mech. This card's insane. It also can recycle Asher Gamma. And uh, you can also just recycle those off of the Nyan Nyan if they're banished, which is really strong. One Cloud Castle. This is very important in this deck. And then I am playing Omega. Since I don't have a Zeus because I just can't buy it right now, and the Gaia Charger, I chose Omega as one of my flex spots. It's really good. Um, definitely if you have room, play it because it's so strong with Gamma. Uh, Juju is really, really strong. It's also nice in the mirror match if your opponent is holding like their, their trap for whatever reason. You can summon this, and this is a name that cannot be destroyed, so they can't just chain the trap when you're targeting with your Virtual World card. So this is actually pretty clutch in the mirror. Because it'll out the trap whether they like it or not because they can't pop it and you can send the trap to grave. And now you don't have to worry about dealing with the trap. So the moment this is the field, if for whatever reason they still haven't used the trap, uh, you'll basically just out the trap. Because if you read it, it doesn't just target a monster. It actually targets a one card on the field and just sends it to the graveyard. So it'll just out the trap even if they chain to pop it. If you set your grave up correctly, of course, it will not be popped. But if they have QB up, this card is just not It's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. And then we also have Coral and Charge Warrior for the rest of the level 6s. is another cartel breaking boards, and then I do play double VFD. I was thinking about playing M7 and 1 VFD to recycle it, and then like use M7 for utility. Um, I don't know, I still might test more, because I don't play too many ranked 6s, I think I just play one. Inner Black Veneer is just an honorary Trishula, it's actually really strong, I think you should play it, it's way too good. Sometimes it's better than this, because like when you're going second, uh, you when like this survives and you're going second. I mean not when you're going second in general, but if this survives and you're trying to break your opponent's board, you just use it to call light so you don't have to worry about nib. And then you want to summon this to just start banishing cards. Uh, this will also out like the same thing out in dragoon. You could literally trish a dragoon and then use this to out the next card. And the fact that if you're playing against Shadals or Invoked, you can just banish their cards so they can't use them is just really good. Uh, and then Fan Fan's nuts. It'll pressure your opponent, force a negate out, and if it gets negated and destroyed, it'll float into two names that can synchro into another card that will just provide spot removal. So it baits in two negates when you really think about it by itself, as long as like it resolves, obviously, if they don't ash it. And then Quinlong, like that's what I mean. This deck has so many tools to combat the meta and break boards or make boards. It's just a well-rounded deck. Um, then I play Gossip Soul. In your good hands, you can put this up so you don't have to worry about Nib. And then we also have Jaja. Since I have the room, I'm not playing, you know, like the... Um, Zeus, this is actually really, really strong. It's recursive, and it is a whip tail just consistently, uh, just to drain your opponent's resources. It's so strong. Uh, so let me check timer. Oh, okay, that's good enough. So yeah, just let me know what you guys think of the deck profile. Um, I am going to be showing you guys how to combo with Spell, Trap, and Monster with every single one of them. Like, to explain it um, in better ways, what I was doing was this. You pick Spell, you pick the gate that plays the trap, and you basically pick next thing monster. And I not only learned how to combo with Nyan Nyan, but I learned how to combo with every normal summon. And this was self-taught. It goes to show that you don't actually need to rely on a content creator to learn how to play a deck if you just practice on your own. But some people are just kind of just, I mean, there's no nice way to say it. Some people are just lazy and they don't want to like do it themselves. They want you to do the work for them. Um, so like I will have a combo video showing you guys basically how you can combo with each one of these on the field, revealing. Um, so, the best way to explain it is just like this. You grab every virtual world monster that has the inherent, not the inherent, but the uh, effects to reveal and summon from hand. And you use all four of these, targeting um, any one of these to combo with it. And you learn, that's when you learn what you can and can't combo with. What I learned was the only way you can combo with Quinlong is with uh, Lulu. Like, it's the only way. Other than that, like, you just can't really do much. Like, you just can't, because you can only send um, monster and trap. And even with, um, like, being able to send the Nyan Nyan off, like, for example, Gigi, the problem is it's simultaneous, so you can't just reveal Sin Nyan Nyan and then special it, and then separate chain Nyan Nyan, because Nyan Nyan wasn't in the grave yet. It all happened simultaneous, so it was dumped in special, so it wasn't actually in the grave yet. I thought I used to be able to do that, but that's what I was saying. You remember what I was saying? I was misplaying with this deck, but I learned, so I'm definitely way better with this deck, and um, I just know how to play it, honestly. Like, I'm not a master pilot, but... I definitely know the mirror enough, and I know this deck well enough, uh, where I wouldn't mind teaching you guys if you want to learn, but God bless you guys, Jesus loves you, deuces is wild, yo.